Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and sorry for the delay, I was trying to get videos out once a week but unfortunately with everything that's been going on, family, stress with uni work and just getting back into the swing of things, I've not been able to get the videos out. So here's a video, three weeks late but I hope you guys enjoy. Today's video is about climate change, stock market and my personal thoughts on how this is going to affect us and the future of our planet. As we see political tension with Brexit finally happening and going ahead and things changing for businesses, we have the highest death rate in the UK with 100,000 people now being recorded to have passed away from coronavirus. And everything else under the sun basically, the NHS being stretched, businesses being closed, it is tough for a lot of organisations now and that has to take an effect on the stock market. So what is the way forward? And why do things have to change? From my own investments, I've been looking into what I'm, what's my goals, what's my plan for 2021, where is it gonna go, and what developments do I need to change to get there? So with university coming up to an end, that is taking key priority. So I have to think about that at first. So hopefully I can get more videos out. However, when I've been on the had time off and stuff, I've been reading up on Everything that's going on in the world, climate change, politics, anything to do that, that anything that can affect the markets basically, and think about what investments I have and why I'm changing them. You may be aware if you're an investor and listening to this video that the stock market has been ever since the crash in March, everything plummeted, everything has gone from extreme lows to extreme highs. We've seen organizations triple. We've seen um, GameStop, Bitcoin, Tesla, major corporations and businesses now just hit new highs within the stock market. But as it's been called, it's the bubble or the K effect. The bubble is the aspect of everything is just sitting on extreme highs and they're not taking into consideration the value, the sales, the overall organization, what they're doing. For an example, Tesla. Tesla have become the biggest organization within the car industry against Ford, um, Citroen, Porsche, all these manufacturers, they've became the biggest valued corporation even though they don't generate as much money, they don't have enough sales, He's not Tesla's not actually producing as many products as them, which is crazy to think about. How has a company managed to become the biggest and most highest valued car manufacturer by not even producing the same amount. And this is something called hype. Hype has a major part to what happens within the stock market. And what people talk about can change and influence people's decisions on where they want to invest and put their money. And we have seen that within the last six months, but certain businesses have skyrocketed. I bring this up as my one of my last investments and one of my recent investments to get rid of is my clean energy stocks. So clean energy is something I am definitely going to be continue investing for the long run. However, I do think everything is sitting on a bubble. They're sitting on new highs that um, are unheard of. Some of these businesses such as Sarah's and IT Power actually aren't generating money yet. They're not bringing in financial um, profits to show that they're making um, enough money to be valued at that price. So I decided after I would drop Last week in the market, I decided to sell them. This was personal opinion. This is what I do. I'm not a financial advisor, so it's not. I'm not trying to say that you need to copy this. It is just my personal opinion and what my thoughts were. And I decided to sell them on the aspect of, I think they're sitting too high. It's a stock that we. Do, I do. I don't know what's going to happen with them in the next year. I don't know where they're going to go. I can't guarantee that they're going to be successful. However, they do have a lot of backing, so I will be keeping an eye on them. The stock that I have kept from the basically my clean energy portfolio has been the Global Clean Energy ETF on iShares by BlackRock. Um, so BlackRock are an American organization that basically do um, funds, um, basically have their own sort of like funds and ETFs created around different sections of the market. They created Global Clean Energy ETF. Uh, this is one that I invested in very early on and I've created a good bit of growth from. 
they have a small dividend so uh, one of the reasons i have decided to keep them so my sears set or set is an itm power i decided to get rid of on the aspect of unsure where they're gonna go but i do think that market will grow so i've decided to keep the etf as it covers a lot of grounds for other companies within that sector as the biden has gone in and has changed around the policies that Trump has put in place to come out of the Paris Agreement and he's trying to get himself back in, I think the growth of that stock will be tenfold in the next 10 years. The climate change effects will actually be monumental, I think. In the next 10 years of our lives, if you're, you know, I'm 20 years old, I think in the next 10 years of our life, the climate change and the effects that are going to happen on this planet are going to be monumental. Currently going through a pandemic, I think this will not be the last one. I think the world has to be ready and prepare itself for the next wave of whatever it is. I think there's going to be more natural disasters that will happen as there was in the first six months of 2020, over 200 natural disasters that happened. This was, that's a crazy amount of number to have, like, it just shouldn't happen. So this is something that I think is a key priority as growing up myself and my development and my investments and where I want to put my money has to be thought about for my future. However, climate change is something that has to happen with not just yourself and where you put your money to help maybe develop technologies, put money into organizations to help grow it and maybe your decisions you make. I am a pescatarian myself trying to reduce my uh, meat, fish, milk intake just to try and make that difference because these are factors that affect climate change such as meat dairy these farmers and the producers of these meats and stuff do produce a lot of uh, methane gas and stuff like that that's um, affecting climate change i also think major corporations have to change a lot of aspects of their business to see how they can reduce and help the environment because these corporations are probably the biggest effect of our planet climate change was something that a lot of not just corporations and businesses have to do organizations have to work with governments countries and we all the whole world has to develop this so in 2015 there was a paris agreement a legally binding international uh, treaty and um, created around climate change and putting things into place to help limit um the global warming to below two degrees celsius however this is something that was a landmark moment for like the world putting this in place meant that businesses were be able to re regulations they would be able to control what's going on have a bit more power to try and help stop climate change happening in addition to the organizations and the, the impact climate change will have it's not all negatives it's not all things are going to be worse than the baddest for these organizations there's going to be a lot of opportunities for organizations to grow develop and innovate they're going to be the opportunities for these businesses to create new technology for help CO2 gases, produce better efficient engines, electric power is going to become a lot more energy efficient and regenerative technologies such as solar powered, wind powered is going to have to develop even further than it already is today to help the planet. So I think this is something that a lot of people need to think about. I think myself, I'm one of the things I'm thinking about a lot with what I want to do in my living as I grow up, get my first property, do I want to have some solar panels on the roof, things like that. Just even though I'm in Scotland and the weather's not that good, I think even if you were able to have that and it generates some sort of power from the sun, it is beneficial. An example of this would be like the US. They used last year less than 1% of solar energy to cover usage. So if they were to increase that and use it for their toasters, ovens, cars, everything like that, that would be a massive energy efficient way of using the sun's energy and turning it into electricity that we can use for our general day-to-day -day life. Such as me charging this phone, my laptop, this monitor. It would make a night and day difference if we knew that energy was coming from a natural resource that we know that we're not tearing into and using up coal and burning more emissions into our air 
and polluting our planet even more. You're all probably watching this video going, Jamie, yes, we get your point. You know, everyone knows it's climate change happening and things need to happen and people need to change and develop. But change actually isn't like a simple step. It's not a straightforward go and you can change. As I said, like, for an example, people have a New Year's resolution. 92% of New Year's resolutions fail. That's a massive percentage of New Year's resolutions just don't happen. People start it and then after a month they give up or they something else comes in the way and they're not able to continue. So what does this mean in terms of climate change and the effects on us and how is this going to impact us? So in terms of investment, on the last 350 large climatic disasters for the past 50 years, a, a, a study was done to figure out the effect that has had on the economy and what does it happen to the stock market. So on, over, on average, from all these disasters that have happened, the stock market has only been affected by 2%. You probably think 2% is not a lot. However, the growth in these stocks have been a lot higher than that. And what do you mean the growth in these stocks? The stocks I'm talking about, Sarah's, Clean Power, um, ITM Power, solar energy companies. There's multiple companies out there that are like developing and growing within the stock market. And if you were to invest in some, such as a solar company about 10 years ago, your money would be tenfold. And I think that's not going to stop. I think for the next 10, 20, 30 years, stocks and companies in these this energy efficient way and going from oil and gas will develop even further and will have to become market leaders in that section in, in that sector so it's really interesting to talk about but i think one of the things i want you to do is take a moment have we look at what you use energy wise and think about is there anything you could change or do to try and help the planet to just be that bit more efficient switching off more light switches unplugging things, turning things off more often. The world is changing as predicted for 2030 energy will be a 50% increase in demand. The amount of water will be increased by 30% and an increase in the amount of food that we need will be reckoned 50% by 2030. So the combination of these three, energy, food and water will mean that there be droughts, there'll be things that happen alongside of that. If we're trying to create and push the world to produce faster and faster and create more as we consume more and more and the world's struggling to keep up with us, the effects of that will build up. As we've seen it the now with the pandemic, we will see more and more different things go on throughout the world, such as earthquakes, natural disasters, flooding. There's already, as I've said, 200 in the first six months of 2020 and i think there's going to be many more i'm now rambling on a little bit and i understand you may not have got to this point and if you have thank you very much for being watching this video it was just like we ran about basically climate change is going to be a massive effect to all of us through our lifetime if you're my age or in your 20s 30s 40s or to be fair whatever age you are if you can make a change try to. Um, I'm doing my thing, pescatarian. I'm looking for my garden business. To, I'm trying to get find an electric van, electric tools. I'm trying to go down a more efficient way. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit from this. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world and I think it's definitely worth, if you're looking for an investment for the long term, if you're in your 20s or 30s and you're thinking, what can I invest in? something different instead of your standard stocks and shares, have a look into Global Clean Energy ETF or CRS, ITM Power or Enphase Energy. There's multiple ones out there. Have a wee look and do your research on these companies and maybe one of them might be suited to you. Just to let you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just putting some recommendations out there for what I'm looking into and what my personal thoughts are within the stock market. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe see you next week. <laughs> I'm trying to get a video out, trying to get a video out once a week. I've been a bit lazy with this one and yeah, thank you guys. Cheers, bye.